What's up guys? Hey, we are five, six days away from Anaheim and I got some shocking news for you. Not really. I kind of have to clickbait the titles. You know how it goes. They've changed the time and I just want to let you know and if you're going to the event or you haven't caught this, it probably is shocking news. They bumped the race up two hours. This no longer starts at seven o'clock Pacific. It will start at five o'clock Pacific. So, and it's on Peacock. Here's your full schedule. But I also got some good information today. I'm going to tell you what to watch for at Anaheim and can you win the season in Anaheim? Or is this really an accurate depiction? I'm going to get into that and more. But remember guys, subscribe to the channel. I got to have a lot of good content. I will be at Anaheim. I'm going to do some lives from Anaheim. Uh, Chris from Strapped will be there with me and I'm going to get some good info. So make sure you subscribe, watch for the lives and I'll walk you through the pits, probably catch some interviews. Walk through the stands. If you see me, scream out Cooksey Mob. I love that. And uh, all right, guys, let's get into this. You need people like me so you can point your fucking fingers and say, that's the bad guy. So for the teams and the team personnel, it is a stressful week. So not only have you been preparing, you're trying to get new parts, you got testing, you've got insecure riders telling you, oh, should we go with this? Should we go with that? It's a lot of stress and all this anxiety built up towards the first race. It's tough on these teams. Not only that, teams have sponsors. Sponsors have requests. Where do we meet? Do I get to meet the riders? There's all these different directions and things. You got to get the new, new sponsors wrapped on the trucks, make sure the graphics are all installed correctly. There's so many little details that these teams have to have lined up and they're coming off of, I mean, whether, you know, it feels like it or not. I mean, we're going through the holidays and everybody has to spend a little bit of time with their, their family and friends during the holidays. So it's like, wait, oh, now that's over. Now, boom, now we've got less than, you know, we got today's Monday, uh, the first, then we got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday's press day, and then Saturday. So it is here. So if you haven't already done all that stuff, most of the trucks and rigs have already left wherever they're at, headed towards California. They will have a press day, a pretty big press day on Friday, which I'm not allowed to attend. Um, but it's, it's, it's stressful and I feel bad, but it's a great time for these guys. And, and there's some really key things to watch for. But before we get into that, if you are, if you've been to the Coach Rob store, you saw some of the bundles that he has, if you've had a concussion, or you know someone who's had a concussion, check out the concussion supplement like blend. He has, you know, scientifically came up with some stuff that helps you recover faster and better. So concussions are something that I take very seriously and coach Rob does too. So check out his concussion supplements that will help you recover. Epic Garage Designs. If you're at Anaheim One, head over to AGE. They have an Epic Garage, the race deck floor that we've done for them. And it looks amazing. If you're wondering about those floors or how they work, go check out AGE. Say hi to those guys. It's a great team and their pits look really cool. And they were set up by Epic Garage Design. So the other really cool thing about Anaheim is we get to see real race action for these guys and their new teams. And while, while A1 doesn't determine everything, it will give you an idea of where they're at, where they're starting at. And you can get an idea of how the team chemistry is going. Like if they totally suck or you know, we can throw some red flags and panic. You cannot win the series at Anaheim 1. But if you DNF, you put yourself in a huge hole. Or if you get hurt, you can't end your season. I can't wait to see what Ferrandis looks like on the Phoenix Honda. Will he gel? This is not a full factory team. He's been on a full factory team since he's been here. Um, this, is, this is all new for him. Will he gel with that bike? I've talked to some people close to him and they would like to see him in the top five and they think he can podium. I think that's a bit lofty. I would like to see him just run up front and finish anywhere inside the top 10, but have some good lap times and look on par. That's where I want to see Dylan Ferrandis on that Honda and he can build off of that, but it's going to be tough. There's so many good riders. I can't wait to see Jorge Prado in his super cross debut. That could be something special could be mediocre but don't be surprised if you know something crazy happens and he comes out and wins or you know he's a great starter he's doing really well and you know if he if he won I wouldn't be shocked I would be surprised not shocked then we want to know Cooper Webb has made his debut on the Yamaha 
but he didn't look that good. He didn't look that good in Paris. He didn't look that good in super duper motocross, which I shouldn't make fun of because I really like that series. The super motocross is a home run. So I'm trying to say super motocross, not super duper. I still think the name's ridiculous, but that series is awesome at the end. It's, it's the big carrot at the end, but he has not looked good. The question is, can he step it up? Can he put in those lap times? Can we see the Webb who battled for a championship up until he, you know, got clocked in the head by Adam Cincerulla's front wheel? Can we see that Webb return or is this the beginning of the end? So while Anaheim won't determine that, it's going to give us a good idea of where he's at and if he can get to that next level and be competitive. Because every year he's strong, he might not win Anaheim, but we see flashes of who he is and that he's ready. Everybody wants to know, how will Sexton do on the KTM? Will he still have that speed where he qualified fastest almost every week? Will he have that ferocious, you know, just blinding speed that that's what he's known for? That was his characteristic is, you know, the merchant of speed. That's Chase Sexton. So I don't know. Will he be able, will he stop crashing? And that's another thing people are, will he be able to keep the front end, you know, unlike it does on the Hondas? I don't think that's actually the motorcycle. I think it's the way he rides. And I think he's still going to struggle with front end grip because that's his style when you push the edge like that. But it's, we're going to know the thing that I watch for with Sexton is if he does not have that blazing speed, you can sound the alarm because that's not good. That's the one thing that he always has in his pocket. It's his, you know, his strong point. So if he doesn't have his strong point, how's he going to build on the other stuff? I also cannot wait to see Jet and Hunter as full-time 450 Supercross riders. Yes, Jet raced outdoors, perfect. He won the Super Motocross Championship, which is kind of Supercross, but this is the first true Supercross for Jet and Hunter on a 450, ready to go as teammates, as captains at Honda. I think they're gonna do really good. I think Jet probably wins. If not, he'll be in contention. And then Hunter, I don't know what to expect from Hunter. I expect Hunter to be battling with Justin Cooper, which that's probably going to be five-ish, five to ten, which is not bad. It's not bad, but that's just kind of not what people expect. My buddy Coach Rob 100% believes Hunter is more talented than Jet, and he's stronger mentally, and he's going to probably dethrone him. I do not see that happening. I love coach, but I don't think that I, I do not agree with him on that take. Hunter will be good, but I don't, I mean, I just don't see him being much more than, you know, a fifth place guy. He's going to get some podiums. He's going to be right there with Ferrandis, maybe even with Anderson and some of these guys that are just outside of that, you know, that Roxon, Sexton, Tomac, um, Jet era you're gonna have like that I mean that's so many good guys and then Prado it is a stacked field so to say inside the top 10 that is not an insult at this race so I see Hunter if he can't get a good start I don't see him getting better than like maybe eighth that's just where I see Hunter right now guys don't forget if you need goggles and you want something badass go to ridestrap.com get your let's go branding goggles get your shirts get dialed in I will be at Anaheim with Chris from strapped so come say hi Come meet the, the man behind the company. And yeah, it'll be kind of cool. We're going to have a good time. And yeah, just come check it out. If you're shipping anything, and I'm sure a lot of these companies that are going to Anaheim, they ship a lot of stuff there. Hopefully they've used Precision Transport so it shows up on time where they need it, when they need it. If they use Precision Transport, they'll be dialed in. So hit up pre-pretransport.com. Another thing that I really watch for at Anaheim is I watch for... I love watching the practice, the, the practice session. I want to see how the rider's body language reacts. I want to see who pulls into the pits, who's scrambling for changes. Then you go back to the pits after and see who's removing their shock. How good was their off-season testing? Because a lot of times the testing doesn't match what we end up seeing on race day. You can't simulate a true race condition no matter what you do. The best thing you can do is show up at some of these California tracks towards the end of the day when they're all torn up. That'll give you a little bit of an idea. And... TLD Gas Gas has been doing that, and I think that's going to be a huge advantage for Jorge Prado and Justin Barsha. I don't know about Barsha, though. He's a big question mark. Um, he's coming in off those big injuries, but I'm also told he's been riding, he looks good, and he just pulls something out at Anaheim. Whatever For whatever the reason, when the season opens, Barsha comes to race. He's a guy that steps up, 
And then, unfortunately, he kind of tapers down the rest of the season. But I think that the way they've been practicing, um, I think he's going to be a guy to watch. I think the TLD Gas Gas team is going to surprise some people. And I'm super excited to see how Beta does. Is Beta a competitive Supercross bike? This is a really, really good off-road brand. And I think they're going to surprise some people. Like I said, for them, if Colt Nichols can get up inside the top 10, and if Benny Bloss can make the main event, that's what we would ask for right now. Even like a top 10, is that's a, that's a lofty goal. But we're at least going to see how the beta bike works. And like I said, I honestly think that that chassis, that development, and I know Carlin Gardner and that program has done a really good job with it. Uh, while I don't want to put expectations on them, they're going to surprise some people. I'm excited. Go see them in the pits. Say hi. Welcome the new team. Welcome them. Welcome Triumph. These are great additions to the sport. The sport needs more teams, more rides, more opportunities to make money because we know the riders can't do it through purse money, so they got to get these teams to pay them. There are more job opportunities. So support these guys, thank them, and just be happy they're, they're participating. The biggest thing about Anaheim 1 is don't put too much weight on it. You can't win. You can't win the championship, but you can definitely end it. And we always overreact. Whatever happens at Anaheim 1, we think is going to happen the whole year. That's actually not true. But like I said, it, you got to look beyond. Like I remember uh, Tomac when he was first on the Yamaha. He got like fourth or something. But we're like, no, it's different. This Tomac is good. You can see when guys are confident, when they can build. And it's more about looking beyond that and seeing who came to race, who's in shape. You can, you can tell a lot of things when you get to Anaheim. You can't tell everything. It's going to take about four or five rounds to kind of shake out where everybody sits, but I just can't wait. I think it's going to be an awesome season. And knock on wood, I haven't heard any major injuries. Ty Masterpool is out. He had some ankle surgery. But that's kind of been the knock on Ty Masterpool his whole career. When the new season comes around, whatever the reason, he doesn't seem to show up. You know, and then, then he shows up at outdoors when everyone's forgot about him, reminds him how good he is. And then comes Supercross, it's an illness, an injury. Um, I don't know what it is. I'm very, very disappointed, but I understand. Get healthy, come back the right way, and hopefully we'll see him soon. I don't know exactly. I would, I would probably expect Masterpool about a month into the season to drop in, but that's where it's at. So anyway, guys, remember, subscribe. That's how this channel grows. And if you need a real estate agent anywhere in the country or the world, I work with Berkshire and Hathaway. I can get you an agent to help you buy, sell, or rent in your area. So thanks, guys. And I don't know, if anything comes up, I'll do a video before A1. If not, I'm going to do a bunch of lives. So watch the, you know, watch the feed. I'll be popping up during the day at Anaheim after practice sessions, during practice sessions, doing some live feeds, getting some footage, and whatever I can come up with. So all right, guys. You have a wonderful new year. Welcome to 2024. It's going to be a badass year.